Let's talk crochet. Hey folks, it's Mary, aka Mercy Triumphs, and this is Slow Crochet. This is episode 067, and this is my weekly check-in, telling you all the things that I've been crocheting this week, what I've finished, if I've started anything new, and what is still in progress. So let's get into it. I feel like my week has been consumed with one thing and one thing alone. I put a whole video together about it, and that came out this past Saturday as you're watching it. Um, but I did indeed finish it. If you follow me on Instagram, you got a sneak peek. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Here is my perfectly imperfect Heracross Pokemon Ami Gurumi. This is a free pattern. It is listed below by Shea Crochet. And on Ravelry, I think I was the only other person that has made this before. In terms of Pokemon accuracy, I think he's fairly accurate. Um, he's going to be a birthday present for a young boy. And so I am sure, as most toys do when they get in the hands of young boys, they don't stay in good shape for very long. So a little bit of not straight lines, a little bit of inconsistency between the eyes. It's not gonna be a big deal. It is definitely recognizable as that Pokemon and it is done. Okay, so how many pieces did this guy have? He had, oh my goodness, let me count. 28 different pieces, oh my goodness. Um, the pattern also called for quite a bit of embroidery. We have his back embroidered. Um, the wings are folded up in there. <laughs> uh, we had the front embroidery and then I did not use felt eyes, I did embroidery eyes and I did the best that I could with those. The original pattern called for a separate ball and a separate stem on these antennae, but I just said, I'm not doing that. I just changed several and I put a puff stitch at the end and then I slip stitched back into my chain. I'm like, there's, there's gotta be an easier way than making a separate piece and sewing it to this little stem and then sewing that on. So labor of love or labor of learning. I think this was definitely a labor of learning and learning to value my crochet time. Again, there's a whole video about that and I will have that in the description box if you haven't seen it or if you're interested in that. I get pretty philosophical as I tend to do at times, but this guy's done. As soon as I'm done filming this, I'm gonna go find a birthday themed gift bag tuck him away and send him off to his new home soon. I've already sent a picture to the mom. She loves it. I've already explained to her the video in case she ever watches it. She's totally fine, super chill. You guys, I have really good taste in friends. I have really good taste in subscribers and commenters too, just so you know, y'all are amazing. Anyway, he's done. The only thing that I finished this week, you know what, let me, let me just say, to anyone who actually knows Pokemon, I have been saying this wrong. I've been calling him a he, but, the actual design of the Pokemon has different horn shapes for the male or the female. And the female has more of a heart shape up here and the male has more horns up here. So this is actually a female, but I don't think the recipient is gonna mind at all. I did start one new project. Let me talk to you about that for a second and then I will show you the bits of progress that I've made on the other projects that are familiar from last week. I did start a new shawl. <laughs> And this one is one I've been wanting to do for a while. It is the Pure Innocence Shawl from Crystal over at Bag A Day. I am using a vintage hero size 6.0, size J10 hook. And I'm using some mystery yarn that I picked up from my favorite local crafty thrift store. And this is where we are so far. Can you tell the subtle differences between the gray and the kind of mottled purple? This is a project that's gonna feature in something else in the future, but it has become my kind of mindless crochet project just because it's only a six row repeat and it's pretty easy to tell which row that you're on. And Crystal's patterns are very easy and they're very approachable, which is one of the things that we love about her, right? She makes all these wonderful things look so simple. And by following her tutorials, you grow in your craft. Her original design, does create a shawl that's a 90 degree right triangle. And I am using my trick for making it more of an obtuse triangle. And so that's why it's not quite as long. I'm thinking this is gonna be more like a neck wrap type shawl. I don't have infinite amounts of yarn here, 
but this is coming along really beautifully. I'm enjoying working with it. Um, again, I don't know what this yarn is, but it feels wonderful and it just it just makes me glad. It's so wonderful to have a project that I'm enjoying working on after, after that Pokemon and something that I can kind of put on autopilot as I'm talking to a friend or listening to children read or sitting in the car, things of that nature. So happy days. Now for the other shawl that I'm working on, it does require a bit more concentration and that's one that has been in progress. And I had to kind of take a back seat this week because I do have to focus on it. It is a 12 row repeat, but it is the cis shawl. And in my cake, I've gotten from the solid navy blue into kind of the first strand of yellow. And now I'm in two strands of yellow and two strands of that blue. So here again is where we're going. Um, this yarn, I thought it would be really challenging to work with because it would be by nature very splitty since it's not woven together but um, it's actually doing all right. So if you want more information about this particular shawl, you can look in my previous videos and it is gonna be listed in the description below. Another work in progress. I have made little bits of progress here, but some is more than none. For my up and down pullover, I do have it seamed together and I have started the sleeve here. Now the sleeve looks a little bit puffy, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I think I'm gonna go with it for now because I wanna make sure that once it's on, that I'll have good range of motion here. So it's okay that it's a little bit puffy there, but I am gonna play with the pattern a little bit, play with the dimensions to make sure that it stays nice and fitted to my proportions. So slowly but surely, this is coming together. This is something I really wanna work on more this week because it is actually a little chilly and wouldn't it be fun to even be able to wear it this year? So this one I'm using a size I crochet hook, a 5.5 millimeter, and it's one of my favorite hooks. That makes such a difference. I love when I enjoy not only the tools that I'm using, but also the pattern. There's, y'all, it just feels so refreshing to work on something that I'm enjoying once again. Oh my goodness. I'm making up for lost joy here. The last thing that I'm still working on are these little daisy squares. I think I had three last week and now I am up to eight. So all very similar. They are gonna turn into a bag in the near future, uh, but there's not really a, a rush on this. This is something that I can work on just if I don't want to sit there and work on my shawl, but just another slightly mindless project. The goal here I think now is gonna be 17. Um, my limiting factor on these was gonna be these two colors of yarn, the center and the kind of petals. I think I'm gonna have more than enough of this. So that'll be great. And I'm also using a size 5.5 millimeter hook on these. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for you this week. I do wanna say that Timothy Toad did get to go to his forever home and he was so well received with so much delight. I was able to see that friend, we were able to connect and then hopefully the next time I see this family, I will see them with the new baby. So very, very exciting time in my friend's life and I just love that I got to go ahead and give Timothy to his new home and to be enjoyed for hopefully many years to come by that sweet, sweet baby. I also wanna say thank you to everyone who has asked questions and participated in my little Q&A that I had in my last podcast video. I'm planning on having that up on Saturday, so you can look forward to that. Hopefully I don't get too rambly and too long-winded. I hope you guys have as much fun with it as I do. I got some really great questions, I think, and it's just fun to get to know each other. You guys are such wonderful people, and it's such a joy getting to know each other and getting to connect with each other through this medium. Thank you so much to everyone, everyone who has subscribed, who has liked, shared, commented. Y'all are so encouraging. I love getting to talk yarn with you, talk crochet with you, talk philosophy, and talk about our hearts and why our hearts connect to this wonderful craft that we share. It really is a joy being part of your lives and I don't take it for granted. If I'm not your cup of tea, thank you so much for listening this long. I do appreciate you and I do hope I'll see you again soon. Bye.